Hey folks, this is Terry. This is August 1st, 2019, uh, the Pro School Weekly Call, and we have just a couple of things to show you today that we've been working on. Um, all kind of in the, well, some of it under the hood, but a lot of it kind of affecting the, both the learner experience and what authors of tutorials can do. So I can show you um, the multiple choice lesson format that we created. Let me share my screen. I can find the right button. I have no idea where my Zoom controls are. Or share. All right. So. So our, in the past, we've had both um, text-only lessons, which would be purely text, move on to the next purely text, or lessons with a code challenge, whether or not it includes a file upload, which is something else we enabled recently. Um, but now we have the ability to write a text lesson and then have a quiz at the end of it. And one of the cool things about this is that you would be able to build this lesson without knowing JavaScript. It's pretty easy to just paste in the question and the answer options that you want without really understanding much under the hood. Um, so here's an example of how this works. And the user is going to get the same feedback like they did. Obviously, looking is not code, but just showing off that you can use Markdown to get formatting in these responses. Um, so as usual, you're going to customize feedback for the user to help them understand why an answer is wrong if it's wrong. And we actually have the next button disabled here until the correct answer is chosen, since it's not a ton of work to go through the effort of getting to the right one. Um, and then you can move on to the next question. So that's the um, the multiple choice lesson. And then, Diego, do you want to share any of the other stuff we've been working on? Uh, yeah, we finished and shipped the lesson component refactor. That's what Terry was mentioning when she was saying that we had some under the hood improvements. That also uh, betters the workflow because on the multiple, on the file upload lessons, there was some kind of a bug. Maybe I can show it. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it. As it's already online. Okay, so. Previously, when you uploaded a file, and then you concluded the lesson successfully. If you refresh uh, right now, you have the files cached in your browser. But if you refresh the page, the lesson was already passed, but you weren't able to see the output because there were no cached files right now. And there was no, not, not anything saying what you should do. And the status was a bit, was something like of a mess and users didn't know what to do. So right now we worked on that. And if the lesson is already passed, you can still skip to the next lesson. So you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. If you do want to see the output again, you can just upload another file. And now you have like the submit again button to be able to see the output. And we have a little message. I'm going to refresh again, just so we can see. Yeah, you have this little hint that says, hey, this, this lesson is already uh, is already passed, but there are no cached files. So upload new files and submit it to see the output. And you can submit if you don't upload files again. So yeah, this and some other changes uh, that uh, upgrade the workflow has been done and they're already online if you want to check check them out. Yeah, uh, you're muted, Terry. 
<laughs> Thank you. So we're <laughs> some of the other stuff we're doing is working as part of the broader IPFS documentation team to improve linking between educational resources that exist right now. So um, we're going through, we're doing a couple of things. One is that we're going to the websites that exist for IPFS, um, the, the main IPFS.io, js.ipfs.io, adding links to Proto School, and then Diogo's in the middle of going through and adding links from our tutorials out to documentation. So for example, the API docs about the specifics of how some function works. Um, so that's all kind of in, in progress, one of those things that's never quite done, but we're um, pushing away on some of that stuff. And there is the IPFS docs call happens regularly on Mondays. If anyone is interested in joining that, you can find it on the IPFS community calendar. Um, what else, Diego? Mm, I think that's about it. We're thinking of creating a new tutorial. We already have the MFS one, but now we were thinking of adding a new tutorial on how to add and get files from IPFS, but not with MFS, the low level, low level API, so yeah. so to speak. So yeah. Yeah, that so that's be... next, yeah, on the content front, that's the next thing we expect to roll out. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's it for our updates today. We can uh, wrap early. Um, people can catch up and watch this later. Feel free to help us tweet about our new yeah. multiple choice lessons. And the fact that this means you don't need to, well, you already didn't need to code to build lessons, but um, we have updated the instructions for building tutorials to reflect that multiple choice options. If anyone is interested in seeing how they do that, you can find it in our readme. So, all right, we'll see everybody next Thursday. See ya. Bye, folks.